Good afternoon listeners and welcome to the third session uh, of this update teleconferencing session on information systems for managers. Uh, in the two sessions that have uh, gone by, we uh, have uh, started to discuss some of the upcoming trends in information systems and uh, then in the second session we discussed a case study of Dell computers. Uh, and witnessed how information technology has helped them to uh, reap benefits. Now, in the third session, uh, I'm going to narrate a story to you and uh, I'll relate that story with uh, your uh, using information technology in a beneficial manner. And also, I'll take you to a case study of a company where everything was going wrong. And uh, everything means uh, they were short of cash, they were not delivering in time, they were uh, inventory and warehousing problems, and there uh, were uh, shortages in production and other kind of things. So, everything was in a disarray with that company, and uh, we will see and we will witness how information technology has been able to help that company from uh, that disarray position. Uh, this was uh, the task that we are going to complete in this session and uh, I'll still request uh, learners across various regional centers as to uh, whenever they want to ask a question they can uh, they are always welcome to do so. So let me start uh, with the presentation and uh, I'll start with a story uh, about a small boy and his piano. Uh, you can see on your slides that uh, I've called it a case of a boy and his piano. And it's a very, very beautiful and sentimental kind of a story which uh, tells you about the mesmerizing effects. And later I would relate this with the, the information technology that we are studying in this session. So what happened that uh, a young boy was learning how to play piano and uh, to promote and encourage the young boy, the mother uh, of that boy took uh, that boy to a Mozart concert. Now you all must be knowing about Mozart. He was uh, one of the most famous composers of the Western uh, classical Western music. So mother took that boy to uh, the piano concert and what happened that uh, the mother got busy in talking to uh, somebody and seizing that opportunity the boy uh, escaped from the hands of her mother and uh, he started roaming in the auditorium just to explore that what are the things that uh, make uh, the auditorium. So he finally reached a door where no admittance was written but he ignored that and he went enter the uh, he entered uh, that uh, door and uh, later on when uh, the house lights were dimmed and the concert were, was about to begin uh, curtains were parted uh, from the stage and uh, Impressive Steinway was visible to the audience and uh, the show was about to begin. The concert was about to begin. So, the mother in horror saw her little boy sitting at the keyboard innocently picking out Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. That was a very famous uh, uh, jingle and uh, every beginner would start with that on a piano. So, the boy was start uh, playing on that piano uh, this jingle twinkle twinkle little star 
At that moment, the great uh, piano master Mozart entered and uh, he hurriedly went to the piano and uh, whispered in the boy's ear that uh, don't quit, keep playing. And what uh, he, he did next was that uh, he uh, slowly uh, filled in the bass by uh, uh, playing those uh, key, key pads. So he filled the bass and uh, on, from his right arm uh, he uh, added obligato. So there was combined effect was very good. The boy was playing twinkle twinkle little star and the bass and obligato were accompanied by the master. So together the master and the young novice transformed a frightening situation into a wonderfully creative experience. The effect was so good that the crowd was mesmerized. Now the moral of this story is that you have the power to transform any problem into a way to mesmerize your audience. Now let me come to the point why I have introduced uh, or narrated this story in this session on information technology. The reason is that uh, you can take the place of that little boy. You as a young manager take takes the position of that young boy. Masters are people who are expert in their own fields. Now what information technology is doing here is that it is making available all those masters to you so that you as a business manager can enhance your performance. And this is why I introduce this story here that with the use of many masters in the form of information technology, you would be able to create a mesmerizing effect on your customers, on your suppliers, on your dealers and whatsoever is related to your business. So, the need is that we understand the benefits of information technology and make a promise to us that we will use uh, these benefits into our day-to-day -day core. Now let's move on to the concept which Professor Patel was talking in the first session. He was talking about digital economy and even I made some references to those uh, changes which digital economy has brought into our day-to-day -day life. So economy that is based on digital technologies like internet intranet and other networks like van van is value added network computers softwares and others and it is also called internet economy new economy or web economy so we are now living in a digital economy where uh, there is a plethora of uh, technologies available at our uh, command and uh, we have to make a legible use of these technologies, legible and advantageous use of these technologies. Again, I would like to redefine digital economy. Uh, digital economy basically refers to convergence of computing and technologies on the web. This convergence enables all types of information, data, audio and video etc. That means you can see the pictures, you can listen to what the person is speaking and you can also exchange data. That means you can send data and you can uh, receive data. So these three things are converged into one single device and this is the biggest benefit that technology has given uh, in the present times. And the most interesting thing is that uh, these audio, data and video, they can be stored, processed and transmitted. A very simple example of this storage, processing and transmitting is uh, this teleconferencing session in which all these things are present in a zip drive uh, which is with me. What I have done is that I have transferred uh, this audio, video and data, uh, in fact video and data uh, to the computer 
and from computer that is transmitted to you after adding uh, my video and my voice. So the effect that you are getting is that you are seeing pictures, you are watching my video and you are listening to uh, my voice. So what you are getting is an integrated system which is transmitting voice data and pictures and video. So this kind of integrated systems have changed the economy. They have brought a revolution in the economy and uh, businesses have adopted this very very fast. As Professor Patel was telling that the biggest innovations have occurred in the telephony sector. Uh, so this is the need that uh, information technology has to be used in a big manner in the digital economy. I'll give you some examples. Uh, you must have seen the immigration process like if you are visiting uh, a foreign country, when you land uh, up in that country, you have to follow an immigration process and that is a very, very, that used to be a very, very tedious kind of a process. So what was happening in the old economy that you had to wait in a line to be processed by immigration officers which are slow and inexperienced and you may wait close to an hour or more. And there were big queues because the time taken by uh, the immigration officer is added uh, on the position where you were standing. Now in the digital economy, uh, all these things are not there. Immigration officers are equipped with the latest information technology. You must have heard about the name uh, biometrics. And biometrics is a technology which can collect all the data uh, pertaining to biometry of a person and it can compare and uh, single out the suspects. So what is happening in the digital economy that your passport is scanned and a photo taken. That is compared with the passport and a database. Even fingerprints are matched and compared and these systems use a technology called biometrics. You are through in 10 seconds of time because for a computer, it is very easy to match uh, your image with millions of images that it, it had stored. So, who has benefited from all this process? It is eventually the customer. It is also the immigration officers. It is, in fact, it is everybody who is involved in this process because the process has become very faster it has become very convenient and it, uh, it has become very foolproof in the sense that uh, nobody can trick this system. So this is an example of transmission from manual systems that were used in old economy to the digital systems that are used in digital economy. Let us take another example. Take the example of a photographer. Now, in the old economy, that photographer had to buy a film at a store, insert it into his camera and take pictures. And once uh, he completes the film, uh, he takes it to a studio for printing. And uh, after seeing them, he again goes back to the studio to order enlargement and uh, multiple copies. And uh, then uh, he sends them by uh, post to his customers, friends and families. Now this was the old story where uh, all the processes were very tedious in the sense uh, you give a photo to a studio and he will say that uh, he will take at least 48 hours in processing uh, those photographs and so on. Now even uh, studios are processing the photographs in one hour's time. But uh, you see how much money, time and efforts were wasted. Like money is wasted on buying a roll, which uh, after completing 36 snaps would uh, be of no use. Also these uh, things were not as accurate because there were so many uh, repairs that uh, these analog camera used to ask for. 
and you have to be very cautious in preventing the lens, uh, the cells and the film, say film if exposed uh, to the light uh, can damage all your photographs and things of that sort. Now in, in the digital economy, what has replaced it? Now uh, the photographer would use a digital camera that can also take videos. No film and no processing are required. What is required is a USB port by which that camera can be connected uh, to the computer and uh, you can always uh, see the results and enlarge them or uh, cut short them and do whatsoever you want. You can create a multimedia presentation with uh, them and send uh, them to your family and friends via email. So you basically don't have to do anything and uh, if, if you talk about uh, foreign countries then uh, you can just log on to the internet from your computer and you can order the prints of uh, those photographs which will be transmitted to the studio by email and uh, he will uh, dispatch the printed photographs by courier or by a delivery boy. So you see how much efforts, time and money is saved here and also you are getting unlimited uh, photographs depending on the memory of your camera. So uh, this is the change that digital economy has uh, brought uh, to the business. Now these are very very small and simple examples but they are in abundance in our day to day life. That means you will be seeing so many things which are technology enabled and which are changed uh, due to to the advent of technology and usage of technology. With this uh, stimulation, I'd like to take you to uh, a case study of a company called Friedland Timbers. And as I told you that uh, everything was in a disarray in that particular company. Now uh, let us witness that case and uh, see what was going wrong in the, that company. Uh, this uh, is basically a story about a, a company called Fly Friedland Timbers and uh, Johan Klassen is the MD of Friedland Timbers which uh, makes specialized, specialized wood products for the construction industry. So their clients were in the construction industry and they were supplying wood products to the Con construction industry and uh, they were making specialized products so their product were in much demand. So uh, one day what happened that Johan was worried about the late de deliveries to some important customers. Some of his important customers made a complaint to him that your company is delivering the material in a very late manner. So he was worried about it and he decided that uh, he will visit various units of the company and uh, try to figure out the reason for, uh, for the delay. So what happened that uh, b uh, he tried to reason out because uh, the industry was very competitive and unless he responded uh, to solve the problem of late deliveries, uh, he would know that his clients would, would move to a different kind of a company and uh, eventually the loss would be of fried land timbers. So uh, he uh, went to different units of that company like production, warehousing, transportation, finance and other kind of uh, units and asked each uh, of the manager there as to where is the source of problem. and. Uh, you see what kind of responses he got uh, in the next slide I'm going to present that only uh, the kind of responses he got made him even more puzzled so the production manager marketing manager was worried about the late deliveries so production uh, was blamed in the first uh, first time they said the production is unable to produce the goods at uh, correct time and uh, this is hampering the delivery. So marketing pushed the blame on the production. And uh, production uh, said that uh, our own supplies were late in delivering uh, 
certain type of wood and this shortage of key raw material disrupted our production plants. We cannot be blamed for this. So the, what the production manager has said that we are not getting the raw materials in time and uh, the suppliers who are supplying uh, different kind of woods to us are not uh, supplying the raw materials in time and that is disrupting our production plants. So uh, we cannot help in this situation because everything is order in the production unit. So if we get the raw materials, our production plants are perfect and uh, we uh, promise that we can finish our production uh, in correct time and give it to marketing for delivery. This was uh, the answer of the production manager. Then uh, the MD went to the warehouse manager to see what was happening in the warehouse and why the raw materials were short. The warehouse manager said, there can't be anything wrong here. Stocks have been climbing for the past year and last month they were at an all-time high. He said that our stocks are complete and uh, there is no dearth of stocks and uh, we cannot be blamed for this because everything is order is in order here. We have all-time high stocks of most items but there are still occasional shortages and uh, these high stocks are causing me problems with the space and they are stretching my budget. I think that the blame lies in purchasing who do not order the amounts that we request. So what was happening at the warehouse that uh, there were ample stock of some items and uh, there were almost no stocks of some items and he said that keeping stocks, uh, keep, keeping high stocks of many items is taking lot of space and uh, I have to incur more expenditure on uh, these items and uh, there must be something wrong with the purchasing unit because that is not uh, ordering the amount that we are requesting from them. Then Johan uh, went to the purchase unit and he saw that some stocks were drifting upwards because purchasing were buying large quantity of some materials. And at the same time they were delaying some purchases and this produced the shortages. When he asked an, for an explanation from the purchase manager, purchase manager said, let me remind you that eight months ago you instructed me to reduce material cost. I am doing this by taking advantage of the discounts given by suppliers for large orders. Well, you see, uh, the MD was falling in a trap because production manager uh, laid the uh, blame on uh, warehouse manager and warehouse manager on the purchase manager and purchase manager said it was only uh, the MD who has instructed uh, him to buy large quantities because uh, in buying large quantities they were able to get some discounts and uh, that was financially beneficial for the company. Then uh, he said okay let me find a reason for this. So uh, purchase manager as per the new company policy was buying uh, quantities in uh, large order assuming that they will need the material at some stage. So I get the discount and material is already in the stock when we need it. So this was the policy that the purchase manager was following. And uh, some, he said sometimes keeping things in stock would take too much space or be too expensive. So then I might delay an order until I can combine it with order to get bigger discounts and this was the explanation given by the purchase manager. Next the MD went to the transportation, uh, transportation unit and he talked to the transport manager and uh, he thought that he was close to the source of his problem and might ask for purchasing policies to be re renewed. So uh, he talked to the transportation manager who was not sure and he told him that uh, it is much more efficient for me to bring larger quantities into the company. 
If you reduce the average order size, the transportation cost would increase. Again, there was no solution in sight for the MD. So uh, what he did uh, that he decided to talk to some of his suppliers and uh, he was thinking that uh, maybe some kind of solution would come from the suppliers. So when he was talking to the suppliers they said that your company is, a, is in a very bad shape because it is not giving us the payments in time. Now the MD was puzzled. He never thought that this was also happening in the company. So he went to the finance uh, unit and uh, asked his accounts manager for an explanation. The manager said the company's inventory and transportation costs are so high that we are short of cash and we are delaying the payments to improve our cash flow. Later, uh, the problem that arose from the marketing unit was transformed into a situation in which all the units of that company were in disarray and uh, uh, like he was even more puzzled. Later on he found that the late customer deliveries which started uh, his investigation were actually caused by poor sales forecast by the marketing department. They have seriously underestimated demand and planned production was too low. All the employees at the Friedland Timbers were doing their best but things seems to be going terribly wrong. Now uh, my question to the viewers is what was wrong with the Friedland Timbers? And the answer is that it was lack of IT applications in the functional areas. Now let us analyze this scenario. Finally the error was that the marketing unit was not giving proper sales forecast and what is meant by sales forecast is that you predict in advance that uh, these many items were to be sold in the forthcoming months. So what happens in a company is that when the sales forecast is made every unit gears up to take care of that situation. Say if I say that in January 2008 uh, 10,000 students will join the MBA program and will take these, these, these courses. Then there are so many things which will move in this university. Like uh, we should have 10,000 copy of the study material. We should have educate cons counselors at the study center to teach uh, the students that will be joining that particular course. So, and there are so many other things which will be moving. So, in the case of Friedland Timbers, since the marketing was unable to make a proper forecast, the, the production schedule went disarrayed, the warehouse manager was stocking units just by his uh, guesswork because he might be storing uh, things, raw materials that are uh, not so important but uh, he was missing the important items and so on. Since he was stocking too many items to take care of the future, it was taking a lot of inventory cost uh, for him to fulfill that. And since the inventory and uh, transportation costs were rising, there was a short of cash in the company. And uh, the finance manager was managing this situation only by delaying payments of the suppliers. So that was uh, giving a bad name to the uh, company and so on. What is the moral that we get from this case study? The moral is that we haven't integrated uh, the various units of that particular company. Now if those units are integrated and they uh, and the data pertaining to those dif uh, different units is visible to each and everybody, then probably this kind of scenario would, wouldn't have arisen. This is where information technology comes into picture as it can show the data pertaining to one unit to the other unit so that uh, he can take a clue from that and he gets ready for the future. So now let us discuss the applications of uh, information technology in various functional areas. 
uh, information systems have applications that can support many functional activities and uh, the major functional areas in which information systems can be applied are production operations management, marketing, accounting and finance and human resource management. These are the functional areas where you will find lot many applications of information systems. Take the case of uh, production and operations. You have applications of information technology in logistics and inventory management. You must have heard about MRP and MRP2. MRP is Materials Requirement Planning and this is a software that facilitates the plan for acquiring, producing parts, sub-assemblies or materials in the case of interdependent items. And uh, MRP2 is known as Manufacturing Resources Planning and it is an integrated software that adds functionality to a regular MRP. Ex for example, uh, you would be uh, knowing about the cost of the parts, cash flows and budgets and so on and so forth. So, it is correctly said that two things move in an organization. It is the physical goods and it is the data. And if the flow of these two things are as smooth as possible, then there are no reasons uh, as to why a business would not be successful. So you move the physical goods and you call it logistics and supply chain management and uh, you move uh, data and you say that uh, this is information systems that they are based in that company. Then uh, in production and operations we have uh, systems known as just-in-time systems which is basically an approach that attempts to minimize waste of all kinds of space, labor, materials, energy and so on and to continuously improve processes and systems. So this is just-in-time system and uh, then you use project management techniques to monitor and evaluate uh, your current activity. There are two kind of uh, methods here. One is PERT and other is CPM. PERT is program evaluation and review techniques and uh, CPM is critical path method. Then uh, there are emerging trends like computer integrated manufacturing or CIM. The simplification of all manufacturing technologies and techniques is computer integrated manufacturing and uh, here you automate as many of the manufacturing processes as you can. You integrate and coordinate all aspects of design, manufacturing and related functions. So CIM is basically a technology that is enabled by the use of information technology and uh, it has eased out many processes. Again, uh, there is a concept called product life cycle management, which is PLM. And it's a strategy that enables manufacturers to share product related data for development. Now, as a manufacturer, if you have access to all uh, product related data, then uh, your work is half done. In fact, you will be very successful in making uh, necessary changes to the product design and uh, in that way you can facilitate the uh, the production process. Now let us see uh, what uh, are the things that uh, information technology can uh, offer to the marketing functional area. We uh, will talk about channel systems and what are these channel systems? These channel systems are all the systems involved in process of getting a product or service to customers and dealing with all customers need. So there are various channel systems in place in the marketing area which are constantly taking data on product and services and customers and uh, they are designing new methods to fulfill the customers need in a big manner. 
and uh, it is basically the information systems that play an important role here by increasing customer satisfaction, sales and profitability. Then uh, information systems are used in uh, customer orders that uh, Professor Patel was discussing in the last session that uh, how Dell uh, used uh, that build to order PC kind of a system. So customer orders, market research, sales, customer service, advertising and promotion, product and service pricing. Uh, if time permits, I would like to uh, narrate another uh, case of a toy maker in US to you uh, who used basically uh, information systems and uh, get himself out from uh, a particular situation. Let, let me complete these functional areas first. Then uh, let us see the applications of uh, information systems in finance. Here. Uh, you can apply information systems in investment management, financing operations, raising capital, risk analysis and credit approval. Uh, I'll also give you an idea about uh, how information systems are used in credit approval by the banks. Uh, in the previous session we were talking about data mining. So uh, now this is a new concept in the information systems which has taken the business world uh, by storm. In the sense, data mining means uh, all these businesses collect large amount of customer data and what they do is they clean that data and uh, m uh, put that data in the form of a data warehouse and with the help of uh, predictive and descriptive data mining techniques, they are able to fish out uh, whether a particular customer would be a profitable customer to them or uh, he'll not be a profitable customer. So, if a company, if a bank or a company has all the information about uh, the prospective customers who would be uh, asking a loan or a credit, then they, were, uh, they will be in a very good position to forecast whether this, uh, whether giving a a loan to a particular customer would be in company's interest or not because they will be having all the data related to that part particular customer. So they will see that uh, this is a customer who repays his loan uh, in time and uh, this is his financial track record. So in this way it becomes very easy for them to approve a uh, credit to a particular customer. Then in human resource management, uh, uh, information systems are used in employee recruitment and selection, then hiring, performance evaluation, salary and benefit administration, training and development, labor negotiations and work turning. Again human resource management uh, is basically about uh, employee and uh, their welfare. So information systems can be used in a big manner here uh, so that uh, more benefits and more welfare measures are given to the employees. So this was all I want to show in this session and uh, as I was telling you I will give you another example of a US toy maker. So uh, what happened uh, uh, with that US toy maker? that uh, it has analyzed that the sales of the toys increases in the month where when the Christmas is there. So in the December month there is a maximum demand for the toys because uh, every parent or every uh, elder one wants to give toys to the children. So what happened that uh, a company was selling a particular brand of toy in a big manner and uh, it knew that during the Christmas period there will be lot of demand for that particular toy and it wanted to offer the best kind of services, the best kind of uh, complaint uh, receiving section so that uh, the complaints of the customers uh, can be dealt with. 
what happened in one winters that uh, there was suddenly a surge in uh, customer complaints on that uh, company so what that company was doing was uh, it was using uh, a series of telephones uh, to take customer complaints and since there was a huge surge of uh, customer complaints all the three four lines that 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 company has put to receive the customer complaints were choked so there was a major complaint from the customers that uh, your company is not picking the phone or uh, you are not receiving our complaints and that had given a very bad name to that company so they called an emergency meeting and uh, discussed the matter as to what they should do and then uh, the use of information systems came into picture uh, people advised them that you make a website from where you can take customer complaints and ask the customers to lodge a complaint on a website because that can handle unlimited number of uh, queries at a time and also you put a faq section uh, on on that w websites and you ask customers to read the faqs before uh, they lodge a complaint and a miracle happened in the sense uh, 67% of the customers have said that uh, after reading the faqs the, they were able to resolve their complaint and there was no need to lodge a complaint so 67% of the complaints were reduced when information is shared with the customer in the form of faq and the rest 33% of the complaints were those complaints which were to be attended by the engineers of that company and uh, in this way they resolved all these problems so this was one example similarly you can take many examples uh, in fact if you are doing a business in not a local manner then you would have to opt for the benefits of the information technologies otherwise it would not be possible for you to do any kind of business a global business maybe you can run a store in a local city that is perfectly all right or you could be a newspaper vendor who delivers uh, newspaper to 200 houses then probably you don't uh, need uh, information technology but if you want to be a vendor who deals with 34 countries you deal with millions of customers then it is not physically possible for you to do all the business yourself and uh, with the help of manual systems what you require in this scenario is that you use information systems in a better manner and uh, with the help of these information systems you generate a multiplier effect into your business and uh, this is the crux of uh, this matter so uh, what we have given you in this update teleconference session is a few case studies on the benefits of information systems we have narrated a story so that you as a young business manager can mesmerize your customers and suppliers and your company and uh, let me tell you this is a topic that has no end at all if you are interested you can go into very very deep details and that will be very good for you with this i uh, finish this update teleconference session we'll meet in another session maybe on a different topic thank you so much